everybody, welcome back to another episode of Farmer George. Today's episode is all about early blight in your tomato plants. This year was an especially rainy summer for me and I was experiencing issues with my tomatoes uh, around July. I thought they were experiencing nutrients or water issues and then I addressed those issues and nothing was working. Then I saw one of my friends post on Instagram about uh, late blight and uh, uh, I was like, this isn't late blight, but blight rung a bell and I did a little bit of research and sure enough, that's what I got in my tomatoes. So this episode's all about the treatment of blight, what you can do and how you can identify it so that you can control it in your garden and uh, make sure your, your tomatoes grow and flourish and you can have great, uh, great harvest at the end of the year. Early blight is caused by two different types of fungi and uh, I'm going to try to pronounce them. I wrote them down, so just bear with me. It's... Uh, Alternaria tomatophila, or phyla, I'm not sure, and then Alternaria solani. And those two types of fungi um, are the, uh, the culprits behind this disease. The causes of this disease, or the cause for this disease to be able to spread, is really damp, moist, and uh, warm temperatures. So basically, Temperatures from 47 degrees Fahrenheit to 90, your entire summer growth season uh, is when this can be um, a problem for you. And if your plants are susceptible to a lot of moist and uh, damp conditions, this is a huge factor. So what early blight looks like is, is brown spots, uh, brown and yellow spots, and they're like concentric circles like a bullseye. And uh, those little bullseyes spread. Uh, you typically notice them, uh, at least I notice them first in my leaves. Um, and then they kind of spread to the stems of my plants and then they even spread to my uh, tomatoes themselves. So it can affect every single part of your plant and ultimately you can kill your plant. And what you want to do is prevent moisture and water from getting onto the stems and leaves of your plants as much as you can. Obviously you're growing outside and uh, you're going to have rain and that was the big problem with us in July and uh, August. We had uh, torrential thunderstorms all both months and it was hard to keep my plants dry. So because of all this rain and, and uh, damp and warm temperatures, my plants started to get uh, affected by this disease. And um, the way you can prevent the spreading of this disease is, um, if you see these plants right here on either side of me, these were affected uh, greatly by this uh, early blight. And uh, they don't really have any foliage or stems on the bottom parts of the plants. And that's because I, was, I pruned them all off um, for two reasons. The first one is to get rid of all of your early blight that's uh, on your plants. Um, and then discard that and destroy it and don't put it anywhere near your compost pile. And I'll tell you why after in a, in a little bit. Blight typically lives in the soil to start and if water splashes up on your leaves from a torrential downpour or from watering your plants too aggressively, uh, it could splash up on the leaves and, uh, and, and start to spread. And it usually spreads from the bottom up because that's where the fungus lives and it goes up your plant if you don't uh, keep it under control. So another way to control this is kind of hand in hand with pruning. You can prune all you want, but if your plants are still kind of like touching the ground and, and leaning over on the ground, um, they're going to be more susceptible to this disease. So you want to stake your plants up just like I have here. They're high off the ground. They're really not going to be uh, close to the ground for any uh, splash back. So um, you got to prune and then stake up high. Like I mentioned before, the, uh, the blight can come from the ground as a result of splashes uh, from rain and, and heavy watering. So another way to control this is to uh, turn down the hose, just carefully water your tomatoes, and, uh, or you can use uh, drip irrigation. So it really gentle watering. This fungus thrives in moist conditions. So if you're allowing ample airflow, uh, it'll dry out your plants and the fungus really can't spread that well. So after you, you've pruned your plants, you've staked them up high, um, you've kind of thinned out the, the, the leaves and the branches, you can uh, apply fungicides to, uh, to your plants. And they have plenty of fungicides out there that'll, that'll take care of early blight. Uh, this one in particular, this copper fungicide, is for organic use. And uh, this year I've really made a push to stick to organic gardening, so this is the one I've been using. And uh, you just follow the uh, the instructions on the label uh, for whatever fungicide you use and you should be all set and uh, keep that uh, early blight at, at bay. Another thing that you can do to anticipate early blight is to buy cultivars um, or, or types of tomatoes that have been specifically bred for 
uh, resistance against early blight. So these cultivars aren't 100% immune, so uh, just be wary. It'll be resistant to it, but you still might exhibit the signs. So keep these practices in mind. Uh, you can use the fungicides uh, and just kind of use it as an all, uh, like, an all-out option against uh, against early blight, and, and you should be good. Um, if you're like me and you like to save your tomatoes and you like to pick the juiciest, biggest tomato from your garden and save the seeds from, you want to pick the ones that haven't been affected by early blight uh, because sometimes seeds can get affected by the fungus and then they can grow out next year. If you're growing in, in ground this year, I haven't done that, but next year I will be doing that. If uh, a section of your garden has uh, been susceptible to early blight, you want to rotate your crops and rotate the crops that are part of the nightshade family, like uh, potatoes, eggplants, and your tomatoes, obviously. Peppers, I haven't seen been affected by early blight, but those previous three have. So if they're growing and they've been affected by it, you want to rotate, to them, rotate them to another part of your garden. Uh, hopefully there isn't any early blight in that section of your garden. Uh, if there is and it's rampant in your garden, <clears throat> you might want to use containers and you might want to grow your potatoes and tomatoes and eggplants outside of the garden that was uh, just hit by early blight. And like I mentioned before, when you're destroying the, the blight-ridden uh, vegetation, you don't put it in your compost pile. Because if you put it in your compost pile, that fungus is just going to overwinter in the soil. And when you spread it on your garden, it's going to be a disaster because everything is going to get it, um, all those nightshade type plants. Thanks guys for watching. I hope this video helped you out. If you didn't know what early blight was and you were scratching your head like I was and then I remembered, um, these tips and tricks will help keep it at bay. These two plants behind me were ridden with the disease. I took the steps to get rid of it and they're bouncing back beautifully. And uh, yeah, next year I will stay on top of this disease. So hopefully this doesn't happen ever again to me. And knock on wood. Anyway, if you guys found this helpful, give me a thumbs up, please subscribe. And uh, remember I'm Farmer George, let's share and grow together. See you next time.